The Premier League has seven qualifying spots for European football. The San Marino League only has three, and they're for the earliest qualifying rounds. This is all down to UEFA's coefficients, a complex algorithm that awards European qualification places based on how well teams from each nation perform in European competitions. So today, thanks to Josh on Twitter, I'm swapping Premier League clubs with teams in leagues with some of the lowest UEFA coefficients to see how quickly the English clubs can get these leagues to climb up the ranks. In the first season, we've seen these teams awarded European places, so will they be able to go all the way to the final and win it? They're going to have to do really well to keep their best players, because whilst their reputation is still high and they still currently have a ton of money, it's all going to start to decline, especially when the best players in the world want to play in the best leagues in the world, and they are currently La Liga, Bundesliga and Serie A. In the Champions League first preliminary round, Arsenal beat a side from Moldova, but Everton got knocked out by Chelsea, who went on to beat Arsenal to qualify for the first qualifying round, alongside Manchester City. And both of these sides did amazingly well, going through the rest of the qualifying rounds, with Man City being knocked out in the round of 16, whereas Chelsea made it all the way to the semi-finals, only to get knocked out by eventual winners Barcelona. But it went slightly better for the sides in the Europa Conference League, as Liverpool lifted the trophy for Iceland against Andorra and Tottenham. Thanks to these performances and the huge number of coefficient points they were given, all the leagues have shot up the coefficient rankings, with San Marino, Iceland and Andorra now all having one spot directly into the Champions League group stage. Meanwhile, England had slipped down to fourth in the rankings, with the Premier League slowly being taken over by teams promoted from the Championship and the teams we'd moved there dropping out of the league. But we still had stronger showings from the former Premier League clubs, with five teams making the quarterfinals of European competitions in 2025, and two of them even making it to the semi-finals. In fact, it was such a strong showing from San Marino that they leapfrogged England a year later in coefficient rankings, giving them three direct Champions League spots, and somehow they had 11 out of the 15 teams qualify for Europe. They get three direct and one qualifying round spot for the Champions League, two straight to the Europa League group stage, and one for the qualifying round of the Europa Conference League. So how four more have qualified, I really don't know, especially as none of them have gone on to win a European competition. Although Manchester United did just lose the Europa League final to PSV. But whilst things are going well for some, England is in free fall and is reduced to just four European places by 2028, with only five Icelandic teams remaining in the Premier League, which is now being dominated by Sheffield United. And whilst it's dropped off and been replaced by our four other leagues, I think we're going to see a trend reversal soon. Let me explain. Reputation is the most significant variable in Football Manager to determine how good a team is. The higher your club's reputation is, the better players can be attracted and brought into the team. The Premier League itself still has the fourth biggest reputation in Europe, whereas the Icelandic Premier League is ranked lower than the Championship, the Welsh Premier League is lower than League One, and Andorra and San Marino still haven't cracked the top 100. Reputation is really slow to change, so the longer these leagues' reputation stays low, the more likely it is our former Premier League clubs are going to have a big drop in reputation as well. For example, Liverpool start with a reputation of 8,993 out of 10,000, and it's now 7,277. Manchester United start with 8,350, and it's now only 6,808, although some teams have somehow managed to improve it. Arsenal starts with 8,044, and it's now 8,074. The difference is Manchester United play in San Marino, ranked 107th, whereas Arsenal are in 26th ranked Iceland, so the drop-off is going to be a lot less there. But in general, reputation is falling, meaning that players are less likely to join our former Premier League clubs, and actually go to the new Premier League clubs like West Brom, who just lost in the Conference League final. And just three years later in 2031, the four leagues that we transformed were on their way back down, with England regaining fifth place as West Brom finally won a Conference League just two years after Preston North ended. But over those three years, reputation of the leagues has been increasing, so actually we could see a trend reversal the other way again. This time, Iceland is in ninth place, Wales in 29th, Andorra in 44th, and San Marino in 66th. And teams like Man City are putting in some great performances in the Champions League and still manage to have an absolutely incredible team. So I am excited to see what's going to happen in the long term, so much so that if I wasn't already, I would subscribe to the channel and like the video. 
please. Because perhaps a trend reversal is actually happening, as Wales and San Marino are moving back up the coefficient rankings. And that's partly to do with the fact that Man City won the 2035 Champions League, which would have been a huge boost in coefficient points. They've also won every single title since being moved to Wales. And I guess it's no surprise, but the top five every single season in every league has been the former Premier League clubs. Man City aren't the only European winners. Andorra and Newcastle managed to win at the Conference League a couple seasons ago, but this year Stoke beat Icelandic Nottingham Forest in the final. So there is a huge battle going on between the new English sides and the former Premier League clubs for supremacy in Europe. So I've now jumped much further than before into 2045. And I'm really impressed that all the leagues are still in the top 15 for coefficient points, as well as the top 15 for reputation. But I do think that Wales should be ahead of England, and that's because Man City have now made eight Champions League final appearances, winning three of them, whereas we've had no appearances from an English side. City have also got two FIFA Club World Cup titles to their name as well. So why aren't Wales ahead? Well, basically, the other Welsh sides just can't break out of the qualifying rounds, and if they do, they do pretty poorly in the league phase. This obviously limits the number of coefficient points that they can get, whereas the English clubs may not get so far in the Champions League, but they are dominating the Europa Conference League, and to a lesser extent, the Europa League as well. And so are picking up a ton of coefficient points. Plus, they have more teams competing, so naturally they're going to have a higher baseline of coefficient points if they've got more teams available to collect coefficient points than the leagues that we've moved our former Premier League clubs to. There's now only three teams left in the Premier League that we moved. Two from Iceland and one from San Marino. The rest have now been dispersed throughout the Football League with three of them dropping out of the Football League altogether, and the worst team being Cardiff Met Uni, as they've fallen all the way down to the National League South. That graph is really something, but the continued success of the English clubs in the Europa and Europa Conference League has pushed them back to number one in coefficient rankings by 2055, whereas the other leagues are treading water, despite Man City making and losing another five Champions League finals. It's actually quite something that England is number one without a Champions League finalist, let alone winner, since we moved all of the clubs. But again, in the Europa League, we've got teams like Fulham and Blackburn and Burnley and Preston and Sheffield United winning Europa League's season after season, and in the Europa Conference League, Preston and Swansea are doing pretty well there, winning countless competitions. And whilst Man City are doing extraordinarily well, the other Premier League teams that we moved away have kind of plateaued underneath the top five European League level. Jumping forward to 2077, this is really highlighted in the Andorran League, where only four of our former Premier League teams are still in the top flight. If we drop down to the second division, Leicester have been relegated and are no longer in the top division. In fact, there has been little change in coefficient rankings since 2036, and I think that just explains that after a certain amount of time, things just plateau. I think perhaps we could have had a league break and stay in Europe's top five leagues if we'd moved the very best Premier League teams into one division. And they all did really well off the bat in European football to build up those coefficient points and keep reputation high. However, San Marino probably had the strongest league of all the leagues that we created with Manchester United, Chelsea and in-game West Ham. Obviously, in real life, West Ham are pretty poor this season in the Premier League. But by 2077, they've kind of been ripped apart by the San Marino clubs. Chelsea and West Ham are down in 8th and 9th. And recently, some actual San Marino clubs have been winning the title. So maybe even putting all the best Premier League clubs into one league wouldn't actually work. So from building up leagues like this to absolutely destroying another league, I recently tried to bankrupt the Premier League. And that video is on screen for you to watch right now.